So why is valuation important? And in this context, we, we're talking about valuation as a way of assessing the most likely selling price of something. Well, it's really about keeping the score. And for a variety of purposes, people need to keep the score. Imagine, for example, that you are a large property owner. How do you know what your balance sheet looks like? You need to know what the most likely selling price of your property assets is and are in order to assess your asset value. If you're an investment manager, how well is your portfolio performing? And in keeping that particular score, you need to know how the capital value of your property assets has improved or maybe fallen over, a, let's say, a year in order to assess your total return on those assets. There's also a strong need for property valuations if you are a bank lending money secured against those assets. Property investors use a mixture of their own equity and lenders' debt in order to buy any assets. And that's true for all of us buying houses, apartments and so on. We'll use a mixture of our own savings and bank lending or mortgages. The bank will want to know what our property is worth in the event that they have to take it back and sell it to recover their loan. When we think about assessing the most likely selling price of something or the market value, we're likely to use one of three different valuation approaches. These are direct capital comparison, the income approach and the cost approach. Direct capital comparison is most likely to be used in a homogeneous sector like residential property where we have lots of similar houses or apartments where we can use the selling price of one apartment as an indicator of the most likely selling price of a very similar apartment nearby. The income approach is a way of building a discounted cash flow model for the most likely cash flow that an investment property will throw off. So if we're buying a residential property in order to receive a rental flow from it, what will that rental flow be? How can we discount that rental flow? And what will the resulting present value of that cash flow be? Finally, in a, in a rare number of cases, it may be that we can't use direct capital comparison because the asset is much too individual or rare or unique and we can't use the income approach because it produces no income. Let's take as an example a university building in Oxford. It's very unlikely that there are any direct comparisons of recent sales. It's probably very unlikely that this building is, is achieving a market rental income that we can discount. The only thing we're left with is working out what it would cost to build that building. How much would the land cost? How much would it cost to build the asset? and then we would make an adjustment for the depreciation of the building to get the best possible estimate we can of something approaching a value, a market value.